the whole political chess game, as envisioned by Zbigniew Brzezinski, is purchased with credit on loan and paid for by the Federal Reserve, a privately owned bank with a no-bid, sole rights deal with the constitutional U.S. Republic. Here is the degree system used within the cult of the Federal Reserve. Quote, the Federal Reserve describes its structure as composed of five parts. One, the presidentially appointed Board of Governors, or Federal Reserve Board, an independent federal government agency located in Washington, D.C. Two, the Federal Open Market Committee, FOMC, composed of the seven members of the Federal Reserve Board, and five of the 12 Federal Reserve Bank Presidents, which oversees open market operations, the principal tool of U.S. monetary policy. Three, 12 regional, privately owned Federal Reserve Banks located in major cities throughout the nation, which divide the nation into 12 Federal Reserve Districts. The Federal Reserve Banks act as fiscal agents for the U.S. Treasury, and each has its own nine-member board of directors. Four, numerous other private U.S. member banks, which own required amounts of non-transferable stock in their regional Federal Reserve Banks. And five, various advisory councils. End quote. Even today, diligent efforts by congressmen like Ron Paul, attempting to make public the full accounting books of the Fed, are relentlessly blocked and slaughtered by a, f a predominantly Zionist Congress. And who, when we look at the bottom line, was behind the creation of the Fed, the CFR, the Treaty of Versailles, and the League of Nations, precursor to the UN? Here is a list of their names. Quote, a particularly severe panic in 1907 provided the motivation for renewed demands for banking and currency reform. The following year, Congress enacted the Aldrich Vreeland Act, which provided for an emergency currency and established the National Monetary Commission to study banking and currency reform. The chief of the bipartisan National Monetary Commission was financial expert and Senate Republican leader Nelson Aldrich. Aldrich set up two commissions, one to study the American monetary system in depth and the other, headed by Aldrich himself, to study the European central banking systems and report on them. Aldrich went to Europe opposed to centralized banking, but after viewing Germany's banking system, he came away believing that a centralized bank was better than the government-issued bond system that he had previously supported. Centralized banking was met with much opposition from politicians, who were suspicious of a central bank, and who charged that Aldrich was biased due to his close ties to wealthy bankers such as J.P. Morgan and his daughter's marriage to John D. Rockefeller, Jr. In 1910, Aldrich and executives representing the banks of J.P. Morgan, Rockefeller, and Kuhn, Loeb, and Company secluded themselves for 10 days at Jekyll Island, Georgia. The executives included Frank A. Vanderlip, president of the National City Bank of New York, associated with the Rockefellers, Henry Davison, senior partner of J.P. Morgan Company, Charles D. Norton, president of the First National Bank of New York, and Colonel Edward House, who would later become President Woodrow Wilson's closest advisor and founder of the Council on Foreign Relations. There, Paul Warburg and of Kuhn, Loeb, and Company, directed the proceedings, and wrote the primary features of what would be called the Aldrich Plan. Warburg would later write that 
the matter of a uniform discount rate, the interest rate, was discussed and settled at Jekyll Island. End quote. Nelson Aldrich was their primary political champion at the time of the passage on December 23, 1913, as Chapter 638, Statute 251 of 12 U.S.C. Chapter 3, the Federal Reserve Act. The final wording of the Act itself was taken from the Aldrich Plan, proposing a National Reserve Association with 15 regional district branches and 46 geographically dispersed directors. This differed from the final wording in the numbers of those who served at each level, but this three-tiered plan remained in place throughout the legislative history of the Fed Act, ever since its inception at the meeting on Jekyll Island between Aldrich and the wealthy industrialists and bankers of his time. These wealthy industrialists and bankers were all World War I profiteers who had no-bid government contracts supplying the military with weapons, vehicles, gas, etc. As such, they continued meeting, such as the May 19, 1919 meeting, to create the CFR held at the Majestic Hotel, and continued founding further round-table think tanks called by then trusts, such as those of the Carnegie Ford Scholarship Foundation or the International Endowment for the Arts. <laughs>